blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. shepherd candle for the light of the glory of the Lord shone around them they were the first to see the newborn light of Christ's child may the light of God guide us as we seek him A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring, the, to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. 
Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me, clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and, a bri and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is, sh what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Be to God. Our psalm appointed to be read this morning is Psalm 126. It is found on page 5 of, of, your, uh, of your bulletin. And we will read this responsively by the whole verse. When the Lord res restored the fortunes of Zion, then, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept, be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? 
He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Back in 1994, two Americans went to Russia to teach ethics. They were invited by the Russian Department of Education to teach morals and ethics in prisons, businesses, fire and police departments, and even in a large orphanage. They were also told that they could teach from the perspective of their faith. And so they went, like John the Baptist. We read about in our lesson from the Gospel according to the Apostle John this morning, to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. The experience in the Russian orphanage really hit them. According to one of them, Will Fish, that, that's his real name, uh, there, there were about a hundred boys and girls in that orphanage, children who had been abandoned, abused, and left in the care of the government. Fish tells the following story about what happened when the holiday season approached and it was time for the orphans to hear most for the very first time ever, the story of Christmas. We told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem, says Fish. Finding no room in the inn, the couple went to a stable where the baby Jesus was born and placed in a manger. Throughout the story, the children and even the orphanage staff sat in amazement as they listened. Some sat on the edges of their stools trying to grasp every word. Upon finishing the story, Fish and his companion gave each of the children some cardboard and paper and cloth material so that they could make their very own crash scene. The orphans were busy assembling their mangers as I walked among them to see if they needed any help. All went well until I got to one table where little Misha sat. He looked to be about six years old and had already finished the project. As I looked at his manger, I was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. 
quickly, I, I called for a translator and had him ask the lad why there were two babies in the manger. And looking at his completed manger scene, Misha began to repeat the story very seriously. For such a young boy who had heard the Christmas story only this once, he related the happenings quite accurately until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. Then Misha started to ad lib. He made up his own ending to the story as he said, and when Mary laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I have no mama and I have no papa, so I don't have any place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I, I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. And I thought maybe if I kept him warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked Jesus, if I keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got into the manger. And then Jesus looked at me and he told me that I could stay with him for always. Misha had put himself in that manger. He had found someone who would never abandon nor abuse him, someone who would stay with him for always. We call Jesus by the name Emmanuel. That means God is with us. In this Advent season, we discover, like the orphan Misha, that the God who came in Jesus Christ will never abandon us or abuse us, but will stay with us for always. Jesus promises to be with us when the biopsy comes back positive instead of negative. When the final exam is marked with an F instead of an A. When a spouse leaves and doesn't return. When the dream of success in business is once again downsized and diminished. When the late night long distance phone call communicates a death and not a birth. When the longing for family harmony is shattered by a shouting match. When the desire for companionship is drained by another lonely holiday season. In all of these discouraging and disillusioning situations, our Lord is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. We're never without companionship or support as long as we put ourselves in that manger. So what could keep us from getting to the manger? What might threaten to keep us from the Christ child? One problem can be blindness. We simply don't see the manger. In our frantic search for comfort and joy, we look for lasting pleasure in all the wrong places. Clubs and classes, parties and programs, internet chat rooms and professional conferences. And sure, all, any of these things are good things in and of themselves, but they can also distract us from the one place that we find unconditional acceptance and unending peace in the manger. It is only in a close, personal relationship with Jesus Christ that we discover just how truly valuable each one of us is. That each of us is a child of God. Amen. There's also the problem of our incessant busyness. We just don't have time for the manger. 
In this Advent season in particular, our days are driven by endless extra demands at, at work, school, even church, and, of course, shopping excursions. And that's without mentioning the cultural requirements of holiday decorating and entertaining. It's kind of ironic, don't you think, that the escalating time demands of Advent prevent us from having time to focus on why we have Advent in the first place? <laughs> Consider carving out an evening this week just to slow down and relax. We can declare that the Christ child has been born this day in our particular house, requiring us to simply stay home and keep him warm. Then again, there is the problem of cynicism. Sometimes we just don't believe in the manger. The world is such a violent place. And so often, victory seems to go to the powers with the largest arsenals and the most ruthless tactics. What chance does a baby in a manger have against suicide bombers, serial killers, machine gun toting terrorists, and brutal corrupt governments? It's not a fair fight. We can become very bah humbuggy if we let ourselves. And yet, no single life has changed this world more than the life of that Bethlehem child. A life that challenges people to look beyond this world's powers and tactics to the reign of God among us. I was reminded of that power just this very morning when I happened before going out the door to pick up the latest <coughs> copy of the National Geographic and just it fell open to a page that reminded me of something. You know that this Christmas is the 100th anniversary of the Christmas peace of World War I. Christmas 1914, the troops on both sides of no man's land came out of their trenches refusing to shoot each other and sang carols to each other. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Silent Night, Holy Night. That's the power of the Bethlehem child. There's always room for you and me in the manger. If we will make the trip to Bethlehem, we will find the one who will stay with us on our life's journey every step of the way and will guide us into fulfilling an everlasting reign, one marked by love and peace and justice. If we give this baby comfort and support, we will find true comfort and support for ourselves as well. If we take the trip to Bethlehem, we will find that there is more to this Advent than just the pursuit of our own personal peace. In this time of preparation for Christmas, we will find the chance to change the world, too. We can do that by testifying to the power of Christ in our own lives, telling the world about what Emmanuel is up to. That's what Will Fish and his colleague did when they went to Russia. That's what little Misha did when he put two babies in that manger. That's what John the Baptist did when he came as a witness to testify to the light of Christ that all might believe through him. You know, it's fascinating to note that John is never identified as the Baptist in the gospel according to the apostle John. The, uh, John the apostle has the Baptist consistently shifting the focus away from himself and toward Jesus.
John the baptizer has just one function in this gospel, and one function only, to witness to Jesus. There's an example in all of this for you and me. Our journey as Christians is not simply to stay close to Jesus and enjoy his forgiveness and acceptance and love and peace. Critical and important as that is as part of what Christmas is about. But it is also to explain to the world why we are choosing to put ourselves in that manger. This Advent, take the trip to Bethlehem. We are in that manger with him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our trust in God by reciting the Nicene Creed together. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father. For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 5. It is found in your bulletin on page A. <clears throat> in peace, let us pray to the Lord for the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. <clears throat> Catherine, our bishop, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Michael and Ann, our bishops, for all other bishops, for Rick, our priest, all other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in, in positions of public trust, especially Barack, our president, Pat, our governor, and Jay, our mayor, 
that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show, mer and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, especially Plum Trent, Marion Seyfried, Bob Nichols, Patrick Hagen, Elaine Cook, Bob Love, Jamie Jackson, Catherine Conte, Eric Philippe, Alex Smith, Jimmy Trotter, Amber Yannis, Mike Cooper, Francis Robinson, Mike Joyce, Dale Betcher, Daffy Belton, Susan Neal, Andrew Wright, Laura Stone, Larry Carlson, Pam Hockaday, Ken Howard, Emily Poindexter, Madison Greer, Dave Reynolds, the Forrester family, Tammy Melcher, Shelton Fields, Bishop Michael Curry, Don Gore, Jerry Simpson. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. And also we pray for all those serving in the armed forces of our nation, especially Randy Williamson, Ethan Rogers, Heather Maria Guyana, Jericho Guyana, Amanda Altman, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepherd, Wesley Welch, Spencer Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Bo and Pat Tate, Lothar Smith IV, Katie Curran, Christina Bosacco, Charles Spencer, Adam Wilson, Tommy Mancino, Edward Allen, Lance Sash, Jim and April Doniker, Chris Miles, Robert Murray, Caleb Bott, and Roger Greer, Jr. Preserve and protect them from harm and shield them from danger. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. That being freed from anxiety, they may live in joys, joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray especially for those who are celebrating a birthday this week. Marion Seyfried, Jonathan Gore, Riley, Tom Balsley, Claire Frazier, Hillary Martin, Melinda Rice. Lord, we thank you. Rejoice in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed St. Thomas, and all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God.
of the Lord be always with you. Thank you, Frida, you know, for, the, for the tabernacle. Um, we have a couple of things to mention this morning. First off, uh, Pat Feller's granddaughter, I think. Daughter. Daughter, daughter, was married yesterday down in Brown Summit, and Burberry Kerr was the one, our former uh, priest of this congregation. Uh, Emily Feller married Donald Ball. And that was yesterday, and it all went beautifully and wonderfully, and I just want to report it's yay, and, and Pat especially. Yeah. <laughs> if you've been uh, talking to Pat at all the last uh, oh, month or two, you know, she's been, you know, and she's done. She's, okay. Um, also, you may have noticed all of our young people are missing this morning. And that is because they are at the Bishop's Ball down in Denton at the Walter Johnson Campground. Uh, it, it is, in fact, it started Friday night. Tommy Thorne is down there with them. Dion and I went down yesterday to be with them, and Dion was helping the girls with hair and, you know, things like that to get them ready. It is a ball uh, in that there is a real dance that they dress up for. A uh, big formal dinner, it's, it's, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that happens over the weekend. And uh, the thing I was struck by was when Dion and I arrived, you could see boys out playing frisbee and basketball and everything like that, uh, and no girls. <laughs> uh, it was just, uh, it was only about an hour or so before dinner, they were all in their cabins getting ready. Uh, and then when we got to the, the dinner, the, uh, the girls were just magnificently laid out. Just <laughs> young women in beautiful dresses, and some of them were a little bit younger, or obviously had uh, experimented with makeup for the first time, <laughs> uh, but had done fairly well. Most were quite demure, and, uh, and it was, they were just beautiful, just bells and balls, Cinderella. Uh, the, the boys, 
on the other hand. Uh, well, the boys, now there were a few that were really dressed well. I would like to point out that Sam and Dan were dressed well. Um, and there were boys from some of the other churches who obviously had, you know, probably have fathers who make them dress up. So they, they were dressed up. A, number, a, lot, a lot of boys, though, looked like they were wondering why they had to wear ties and coats. <laughs> you know, but anyway, so it was, it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful time. They're having a great time down there. They're finishing up at about 11.30 this morning. Uh, and they'll be coming on their way back. And so it's been a beautiful experience for them. Um, don't forget Christmas Eve is coming. Oh, we need to move the, we need to have the Holy Family uh, road trip. Would, can we get some volunteers to move uh, the, uh, the, the wise men need to come down along with their camel down here to this window. And Mary and Joseph and the donkey need to come down to this window. If you all be willing to do that. So they come Christmas Eve, Mary and Joseph and the donkey are going to make it finally into the, the manger. And come Epiphany, the wise men will get there. But uh, this window right here, where it's St. Francis. So at any rate, um, don't forget Christmas Eve. Our service is going to be at 11 o'clock. And with Christmas caroling, the candles will be lit up and down the aisles. Uh, Christmas story, wonderful things happen. It's a magical night and beautiful music and carols. And we will be actually, the service starts at 11, but uh, if you get here early around 10.30, we're going to start a season of uh, Christmas caroling and singing and some special music. And so we hope that you'll make time and plan to be here for that. And again, uh, if you've got family in the house, drag them out and bring them. They will be glad that you did. You will too, actually. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. The Episcopal Church women are meeting today at the church. We have a delightful lunch planned for all women. It's going to be a short business meeting, but we have a program from our representatives who went to the conference. <laughs> if you're going to be a bad uh, yes If you look, if you look in the bulletin, it's actually in there. It's in the bulletin, uh, page 18. I'm sorry, it's not in color, uh, but you can find it on the website, and uh, it's in there, and it tells all about it. And that's that's, it's really stunning. Yeah, well, that's always a good reason to read the bulletin, Bill.
I confess I have never considered those possibilities. <laughs> but with that in mind, uh, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
bright and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Thomas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, 
and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Bless the Lord. Alleluia. 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 